What if I told you I can give you 160 premium acres of nature-filled land for free, but there's a catch. Hello, I'm Mr. Cornette, and today we're going to be talking about westward expansion, an era of U.S. history where American settlers were encouraged to move out, well, west. Before we get started, this unit of U.S. history is brought to you by Klondike Bars. Not because they sponsored this video, but because I need you to remember the term Klondike. You see the polar bear on the wrapper there? Where do polar bears come from? Alaska. The Klondike is a region of Alaska that saw an influx of 100,000 American settlers pre-Alaskan statehood who were looking for gold. Some would argue it was this desire for gold in the late 1800s that largely led to American occupancy of the region. But the vast majority of settlers actually left the area when they came up empty-handed. Arguably, this gold rush had a larger impact on the port city of Seattle and its population than it did on Alaska because it was a common staging point for the gold rush. There were probably more negative impacts of the Klondike gold rush than positive. For example, environmental devastation and displacement of indigenous peoples. But believe it or not, it wasn't gold that primarily drove people west. It was a concept known as manifest destiny. Some people envisioned a United States far beyond its original borders, a country sharing coasts with both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. These people believed it was the destiny of the U.S. to obtain these lands. Side note, you guys probably by this point know that I love video games. Well, there was this really cool game about all this westward expansion stuff called Oregon Trail, and it featured a lot of dysentery, disease, and death. In real life, the journey west was just as perilous, daunting, and insert whatever other scary adjectives you can think of. Nouns are pretty scary too. I'm terrified of rattlesnakes, grizzly bears, mountain lions, salmon, graboids. Who's over there? We got guns over here! I'm definitely not cut out for any 19th century journey through the wilderness. Despite fears among travelers, the overwhelming inspirational thought of Manifest Destiny compelled many Americans to set out west for these unoccupied lands. Did I say unoccupied? There were definitely people there. In order to encourage people to move out west despite the obvious risk to their lives, the U.S. government decided to pass this thing called the Homestead Act, which offered a lot of land to Americans for free. If they could survive. That's some Hunger Games sh at least they didn't have to kill anybody to attain their reward. Wait a minute. This brings us to the inevitable and tragic conflict between these homesteaders and the Native Americans that lived there. So how did the U.S. government intervene in these so-called Indian Wars? With trickery, of course. Take this guy, for example. I know what you're thinking. That looks like a spy trying to disguise himself as a Native American in an effort to infiltrate Native tribes and take them down from within. But no, we need to flip the order of these images around. This is something we refer to as cultural assimilation. It's when an individual or a group becomes a part of another culture or society, sometimes forcibly. Perhaps the best example of the U.S. government attempting to assimilate Native Americans into society is the passing of the Dawes Act. It was pretty messed up. Basically, the American government broke up tribal lands that belonged to Native Americans and encouraged them to leave their original lands and tribes by offering private land ownership to Native Americans willing to move. This completely changed Native American culture by ridding them of their concept of collective community and their communal farming practices. Tribes were left broken with their power and influence greatly diminished. That was depressing. Let's uh, change the subject and talk about technological developments. I give you the most innovative, remarkable, wondrous technology of the 19th century. Not what you expected, is it? But this little invention enabled landowners to protect their properties from nomadic ranchers and cowboys who let their cattle graze openly on public and private lands. I have a similar problem. My neighbor's dog keeps peeing on my side of the lawn. Perhaps it's time I put up some barbed wire of my own. This relatively inexpensive solution empowered prospective landowners who wished to move out west but were discouraged by the Native American presence there and the overgrazing which was a result of the American cattle drives of the 1800s. So in a way, barbed wire helped move people out west as well, or at the very least, just helped them protect the land they already owned. And it definitely ended the cattle drives. You know what other technology encouraged settlement out west? Why, the locomotive, of course. 
Trains not only made the West more accessible to people using faster travel, the building of the railroads also drove people West who were simply seeking work. This is especially true of Chinese immigrants who were largely the ones that constructed the Western section of railway for the Central Pacific Line, which later connected to the Union Pacific Line to form the Transcontinental Railroad. Despite all their hard work and perseverance, Chinese immigrants were treated horribly during this period. To their credit, they organized the largest labor strike that had ever been seen in the U.S. up until that point. Ultimately, Central Pacific cut off food and supplies to Chinese camps until the workers resumed building the railway. And unfortunately, this would not be the end of the horrendous treatment of Chinese immigrants. The U.S. government would go as far as banning immigration from China altogether with the passing of the Chinese Exclusion Act. Chinese immigrants would be ineligible for U.S. citizenship until a half a century later. Why did all this happen? Racism, of course, and a concept we call nativism, which can just be defined as a fear of immigrants. Basically, white workers were afraid that their jobs were being taken by migrants. We'll probably talk more about this disgusting racist stuff when we get to our conversation about the Gilded Age. Well, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as I always say, you don't have to love your country for what it has done, but you should love your country for what it can become. I'll catch you guys next time.